Hey y'all, so not too long ago, I was talking to you about um, my lack, severe lack of organization. And so today I thought I would balance things out by offering you an organizational tip. I know, I like to keep you guessing. Actually, it's not so much an organizational tip as it is um, a conservation tip. Why don't I just get to it? Because I actually don't know what I'm talking about right now. Glaze. If you have a kiln, then you probably have glaze and you've probably purchased glaze and realize how much they really eat into your budget. Glaze is not cheap. I thought I'd share with you my favorite glaze, but also a way to really get um, all that you can out of the glaze that you purchase. So my favorite glaze that I use with my students is um, Mako's Stroke and Coat Glaze. I love it. I think the colors are really vibrant. They always consistently are vibrant. I don't have to second guess what the colors are going to look like. Um, there is a big difference between the way they are applied to what they're going to look like when they're finished, which can be confusing for kids, but that's just the way glaze goes. So I'm gonna share with you a tip that I do that will help your students understand what result they will get with the glaze. And then I thought I would share with you how to conserve your glazes. So let's get started. So one thing I purchased at the dollar store before using glazes with my students are some ice cube trays. They come in a stack of three for a dollar. I got a lot of white ones um, and a lot of blue ones, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. When I distribute my glaze, I will have a tray just like this in between a set of two students along with this doggy dish also purchased from the Dollar Tree. This is how we go about cleaning our brushes. So if you notice on my glaze tray, I have all the glazes labeled. And the reason I have them labeled is so that the kids understand what their colors are going to turn out like. I even have a several examples that have been fired so the kids can see that I'm not making it up. It really is going to transform into these amazingly bright and shiny colors. So before I started pouring the glaze in, I just went ahead and labeled my tray, keeping in mind that kids are going to use more of certain colors and less of others. So that's how I've got my trays laid out. Now you might be wondering, why is your glaze still in there all dusty and crusty? I promise I'll address that in just a moment. Let's take a look though at this tray. When my students were making their chameleons, they um, used different kinds of glazes, glazes that had little flecks of glass in it that gave a really beautiful effect. So for those, I had a different glaze tray and I just made sure to write the name of the particular glaze down so they could compare it to what the fi finished fired piece would look like. And again, the doggy dishes are great because they don't tip over, which is definitely something you don't want to have happening when you're working with glazing clay projects, the chance of having something tip over spill, knocking a clay project down and causing it to break could be a pretty traumatic event to a young artist. So these I use all the time, not just when glazing, but anytime we are painting, we wash our brushes in here and dry them on what we call dirty old SpongeBob. So let's talk about how to conserve those glazes. Now, when my students were working with glaze, we kept them, like I said, in a tray like this. And at the end of every art class when we were finished, I like to use the press and seal because I can set it on here, press it, stack the trays. And when we come back for many days afterward, the glaze is still great and good to go. If you do notice though that your glaze has dried a little bit or it's getting that slightly chunky kind of feel and the kids are having a hard time uh, painting it onto their projects, one thing I like to do is just spritz water on it in the morning and then use the have the kids use the back of their paintbrush and just kind of slosh it and stir it around and that'll help make the glaze have more viscosity and easier for them to paint. So when we were finished with our um, clay projects this year. Um, at the end of the school year, I just threw away all of the press and seal and left these on my counter to dry. And the reason being is because now what I'm going to do is just crack these like ice cubes and put them back into the jars of glaze with a little bit of water, shake that up and let it sit. And what that will do is rejuvenate this glaze and make it so that I don't have to waste all of this glaze. Let me show you. Okay, so I'm just going to now take all the glazes that I just popped out of those containers and just drop it into my glaze containers, add a little bit of water, and just let it sit. 
Um, and the great thing is, is if it's not exactly the same color, for example, this is actually a brick red and that red I popped out was a different kind, it's okay. It's just going to slightly change the color of this red. So that way when I come back, I have not only clean-ish glaze trays, I have a little bit more cracking to do, but I'll have these glaze trays that are ready to go. This is clean by my standards. <laughs> and then I'll also have conserved my glaze. All right, in case you didn't believe me, I wanted to give you evidence that the tray really did come clean. I just needed to kind of a couple of more times. Um, and by clean, like I said, this is clean by my standards. You might not ever want to eat at my house, but this is perfect for me to just now go ahead, put them away in the kiln room and wait until next time when we start glazing again. By the way, I know a lot of you guys use ice cube trays for paint distribution. I think it's a fabulous idea. I use it for my regular paints as well. This, however, I don't even bother trying to rejuvenate. I'm just letting these dry and I'll just crack these over a trash can and then reuse these again next year. Um, also, another great alternative is egg cartons. The plastic egg cartons are my favorite, especially the ones with the double lid. Only problem I have found with those is that sometimes the little sections where the um, eggs sit, they have little uh, valleys in them where they've been cut through. I'm not making any sense. But anyway, one paint will run to the next and it ends up making a big mixed tray, which is not exactly something we're going for. So that's why I personally love ice cube trays. I have to buy a bunch before they go out of style. Kids don't even know what these are anymore. What's wrong with these people? All right, guys, there you have it. Now I guess I should go tackle that closet. Not really. I'm going home. Bye, guys. <laughs>